Good afternoon and welcome to Decode the Barcode, a webinar about the myths, tricks and tips for barcoding within your IBM I enterprise. My name is Andy Nicholson of Utilities 400, industry leaders in solutions for the ambitious IBM I enterprise. Today, for the uninitiated, we'll provide insight in starting your native barcoding strategy. We'll provide considerations on barcode generation, site installation, and available technologies. Plus, we'll provide insight into the next steps on how to improve processes and add value. But before we start, a bit of housekeeping. Should you have any questions or require additional information on anything you see within this webinar, please use the GoToWebinar management console that should be hovering somewhere on the right-hand side of your screen. Here you can ask questions. Now we'll answer these at the end of the webinar. So we've a packed agenda for today, starting with an abridged history of barcoding. We'll move into the various types and uses of barcodes by business. Next up, we'll discuss the te technological considerations. Then we're going to introduce concepts that will allow you to deliver native to native IBM I barcoding solution before finishing off with a brief introduction on how we've completed this for our own solution called ShowMe. But for a bit of contextual background, let's start with an abridged history of barcoding. Now, as far back as the 1960s, barcodes were used in the industry work environment, with some of the earliest uses being for the identification of railroad cars. However, it wasn't until the 1970s when barcodes started appearing on grocery shelves and in factory shops. The marriage between barcoding and enterprise was inevitable. Toyota first introduced Kanban in the 1950s, but the first quantum leap forward in process improvements happened in the 1980s when barcodes were introduced to the Kanban tickets. This, coupled with the evolution from MRP to MRP2 systems to ERP in the late 1980s, helped optimize inventory levels, eliminate manual entry errors, and provide greater productivity. Now, the 1990s provided this uh, further with better technology and computing power delivered to the operatives themselves. This produced better decisions with elements such as alternate picks, optimized path corrections, and notices. Now this brings us to the modern day. Today, barcoding provides live transactions at point of delivery. And with modern BI tools, we can analyze these transactions in real time to analyze shipping, production, and warehouse trends. So barcoding has become the mainstay of business today. But what is a barcode? What are its benefits for my enterprise? And how do we make it work for us? Well, let's start with what a barcode is. In very simple terms, a barcode is a graphical representation of data. Every barcode is encoded with a special start and stop character. These codes help the reader detect the barcode and figure out whether it's being scanned forward or backwards. Now, the barcode you require depends upon the data you require to store within it and its application therein. So there are essentially two forms of barcodes to choose from. Now, the linear barcodes are the most common. You'll notice these as the standard barcode on the back of your tins of beans or as part of a bin within a warehouse. Data is encoded within the width of the bars and the spaces. Next up is the two-dimensional barcode. You'll recognize these as uh, perhaps for QR codes on posters or in magazines, uh, but if they're used in other forms that require a greater amount of data stored within the barcode themselves. Now, on this slide, I've illustrated the most popular subsets of each type. Within the linear, we have the original EAN types. Uh, these are still very popular today, but they do have limitations being numeric only, with only eight or two, I think 13 characters being stored. More popular is the code 39 that offers greater flexibility with up to 25 characters of alphanumeric content. But by but our the most popular and most frequently used barcode worldwide is code 128. It has excellent density, high reliability, and it's flexible. Offers multi-character alphanumeric coding with support for all ASCII symbols and controller codes too. It's 
this flexibility, but see its adoption within the likes of the NHS, records management, asset tra tracking markets, and so on. Now, moving into the two-dimensional types, we have the PDF 417. This is excellent for encoding large amounts of data with 1,800 printable ASCII characters, or perhaps just over 1,000 binary characters per symbol. The capacity of this is really helpful in applications where data must travel with a label uh, item, so um, perhaps for storing technical specifications, licensing information, shipping notes, all that kind of stuff. Now, the QR code, or the quick response code, as its, <laughs> as its proper name is, was developed in the mid-1990s as the answer to increasing Kanban ticket information requirements. Today, these have become commonplace in consumer advertising, typically storing web addresses, V cards, or compressed messages. Now, there are more subsets than I presented here, but these are by far the most commonly and widely used today. Between these barcodes, you'll cover the vast majority of all requirements in industry. So, we understand a little bit more about. Uh, barcodes and we've got a good idea on what barcodes we should adopt for particular processes. But before jumping in with both feet let's quickly discuss the benefits. First barcoding provides a unique identity for a part ensuring more accurate picking and are used with less confusion and faults. Now the introduction of barcoding systems also has an immediate impact on data accuracy with an accuracy of over 99% achievable. Using the right technology, data collection and reporting can be completed in real time. We can therefore support better decision making at point of, pos at point of process, apply lean operations and provide live analysis of results as they're happening too. So the advantages sound good, but what processes should we barcode? Where should we start? First, we need to evaluate the processes that can be improved with barcoding. Within manufacturing companies, for example, whether discrete or process, just in time, just in sequence or lean, they all face a range of challenges to raise operational efficiencies. From some existing processes limiting productivity to negligible traceability, you should take some time to identify areas that would benefit from such improvements. Then there's how to create barcodes, how to capture data and site considerations including equipment and network requirements before any of this can happen. Now initially it's important to establish what it is uh, you have to label. For example, are you looking for a label uh, to, to label individual products or components, the box they're packed in, or the outer case containing the number of items, or indeed all of the above? This will give you a good idea of the size and label that's required and will also point you in the right direction with regards to label material. This could be plain printed paper using laser or inject jet technology right through to synthetic label media that will use a resin based ribbon. Next you should look at the type of printer you require. Are the barcodes going to be included as part uh, of some type of form? If so, then a business quality laser printer would be appropriate. Then for laser printing you have a wide choice of between two and eight inches uh, wide printers depending upon your specifications. Also a consideration is volumes. For example, printing a few hundred labels would require a good desktop device costing no more than perhaps £300. However, higher daily volumes or chemically resistant, large format, synthetic labels will require something more serious and hence be more costly. Finally, you should consider the best way to create the actual label design as well as designing them on the printer themselves. Now for the IBM I enterprise, we would recommend a native solution that would consolidate your barcode label and form requirements. We should be able to extract the raw data from your spool file, database tables, or indeed a mix of both. Then using transformation rules, transform the data into the appropriate forms and labels and send them to the appropriate department or printer for generation. For organizations with external 
uh, or multiple offices, consideration should be put in place for remote location creation. For example, the automatic creation dis distribution of XML and PDFs via email or FTP or remote IP printers via VPN. The key here is to use native IBM applications to take the raw data from your enterprise, but enjoy the flexibility to use it as we require using simple process rules. Now we'll look at a solution to complete this in a few minutes to time, but before we do, let's discuss how we go about capturing this data. Before the days of Wi-Fi enabled mobile computers, the very first mobile devices were simple data collectors ungainly handheld devices with very limited storage capacity and no integrated barcode scanner capabilities. Captured data would be downloaded from the device as a batch file for processing as necessary. Now batch processing remains effective but is slow as updates to the enterprise are only completed on holstering the gun or connecting to the device at the end of a shift or on completion of process. Now, real time is where the huge gains are. We've provided insight into these areas in our free white paper. More on this a little later. Now, the barriers to real time processing have been re vastly reduced. Fully integrated Wi Fi enabled computers no longer come with a premium price tag, meaning that business critical data can be captured and processed in real time whilst on the move at point of transaction, enabling live interaction and analytics from your enterprise. When choosing the right type of device for your needs, there are many options to consider. What ergonomically do you prefer? For example, a pistol grip is typically used when there are lots of barcode scanning taking place. A brick is a readily holstered device between scanning operations, so good for ad hoc applications. Finally, choosing the right keyboard for the device should be given some considerations. If keyboard entry is required for entering data, then have one with 52 keys. Choosing your device, its configuration and keyboard will largely depend upon your business processes. We can break these requirements down into a table that details the device and their corresponding application. Considerations must also cover application delivery. For example, for real-time data capture and transaction, the infrastructure must be present to facilitate free processing without being tied to a terminal or batch processing information by having a cradle at the device at regular intervals. These days, most households take for granted home Wi-Fi with multiple devices connecting simultaneously, providing seamless connectivity for any amount of application and services. Similar principles apply to the enterprise, but unlike your home, where you may have Wi-Fi black spots or uh, single level security, appropriate consideration be, should be applied here. To allow multiple computers to roam freely throughout the facilities, wireless access points provide seamless enterprise level connectivity, handing over device connection between them as and when necessary without the operator even knowing it's ever occurred. For real-time point-to-transaction processing, this technology is an imperative. Thankfully, like home broadband, the cost of this technology has tumbled in recent years, while reliability has peaked to over 99%. The required quantity for access points for the Wi-Fi infrastructure can sometimes be easily estimated where there are wide open areas, minimal racking, and the facility is less than, say, perhaps 30K square foot or so. Now, taking this a step further, in this example, should we visualize the topography of a standard warehouse based upon access configurations, architecture and total space, an access point configuration can be designed to meet the individual needs of the business. It's important that you eliminate black spots and maintain a constant 99% plus uptime. So you should ask your barcode supplier for an RF survey. These are usually inexpensive these days, costing just a day's consultancy. However, prices do vary between vendors, so be sure to check out that cost uh, is included before a detailed report, including full documentation of findings, is, uh, is produced. 
Any report should form a basis of a comprehensive quotation from the supplier, installation and commissioning of the required RF infrastructure with a guarantee that once installed, the mobile devices will function seamlessly throughout the facility. Now, when the RF survey shows a need for a large number of access points, one should consider the use of wireless switch architecture. This solution offers the user the ability to control and support the wireless infrastructure from a central controller rather than having access uh, individual access points when initially configuring the system. Making modifications to the settings or fault findings is a lot easier doing it this way. Now, ongoing system management is simplified greatly and in some instances, there can be a cost saving to be made by implementing this type of architecture too. Again, make sure you go through this with your supplier. Now, with the wireless network in place, we can concentrate on the process. Now, here we see a workflow from a customer of ours using barcoding in a number of areas. What's important to note here is that the interaction between the handheld device and the back-end IBMI server is seamless. Now, I'll go into a little bit more detail how we produce the barcodes and the software we use on the scanner in a few moments' time. But at this point, I'd like to suggest that this is the ideal in which your modern enterprise should aim towards. Direct from source, we're producing the barcode forms and labels with the, within the appropriate department using the designated printer. And then, with these departments, we'll be picking within the stores, loading at dispatch, and checking goods in at, uh, at the goods in, or pretty much any number of tasks. We have a real-time transaction at point of process. Now, these live links are a natural successor to batch processing and should be the focus of intent when looking at solutions. Indeed, for more information on batch processing versus real-time, please download your free copy of our white paper. If you don't have the download link already, you'll have one in your inbox in a day or two time, so please keep your eye out for it. But to summarize what's in this white paper, I'd like to highlight a couple of key points here. You see, real time is all about building better processes. It's a matter of maximizing productivity and improving efficiencies to reduce costs and improve profitability. These are real tangible benefits. Once received, um, we can do this in real time at point of process and improve the way that we can see and register. Only recently, the wireless LAN allowance conducted a survey uh, conducted to identify the cost of ownership as well as tangible and intangible benefits gained from wireless LAN technology. Now, they found that 92% of respondents reported a definite economic and business benefit after the installation of the WLAN. 92% will continue to deploy wireless technologies throughout the enterprise due to this benefit experienced. All respondents in all industries, that's manufacturing, retail, financial, healthcare, and education, reported a return on investment in less than one year. But in addition, more timely information enables better decision-making, the introduction of lean process, and more accurate processing. Inventory requirements can be reduced, lowering associated capital expenditure, and facilitating just-in-time manufacturing. While simultaneously, orders can be filled quickly and more accurately, increasing customer service, satisfaction, and retention levels also. And native IBMI real-time processing has an added advantage. Imagine if, as a transaction is happening at point of process, that data is reflected in real-time on a dashboard or a management console somewhere. A great example of this is within a warehouse where on a big screen plasma on a warehouse wall we can display in real time leaderboard of the most productive operatives or live notices, alarms or even announcements. We can send operative alerts or messages and have them respond immediately via their device. All these things and more are possible for the IBMI enterprise. One of the most popular questions we get is, how should we go about creating the barcodes? And my response is mainly the same. Our customers love using our product, Route 1. 
Now you can create it dynamically using the Show Me product as well. I'm going to go into, into a little detail on that in, in another webinar, but for now we'll concentrate on this product. It's an IBMI native solution with uh, PC client components for smart and automated integration. It's simple to set up and can use a mix of data from a spool file, DB2, or indeed both. It can automatically create and produce professional documents such as invoices, notes, picking lists, and labels. To produce the desired result, we will extract and transform data from the selected sources. This could be uh, the database, a spool file, or indeed a mix of both. Merge and encode this as non enclosure image, chart, and more importantly, in this case, symbology and barcodes within the template. As for template designer, we use, well, the most popular one in the world, Microsoft Word. It's quick and easy, but really powerful, and with Route 1, enjoys many options for multiple barcode types. Once this merge has been complete, Route 1 will direct the document to a printer within the correct department and its designated printer. The whole process is seamless and can be automated depending upon the rules. With the right solution, creating the correct barcode labels, tickets, and documents needn't be troublesome. But what can be said about uh, reading barcodes? Well, to recap, we now have our barcode labels that, we're, that we've encoded and produced uh, from their source on the IBMI. To read these, we require a scanner that's designed to read the encoded barcode type. For this scenario, we're deploying a mobile workforce within a warehouse via a browser, so pretty much any handheld computer from the last 10 years should have a capability to do this. Now, we're going to be using a Motorola handheld computer, so on these handheld devices, uh, their data handling components, in this case, the data wedge uh, that's on this device, will translate the red image uh, with the barcode application of choice. In this case, it's uh, Show Me Barcode. Now, Show Me Barcode is Utilities 400 native IBMI barcoding solution that's available via the browser and it's an easy deployment for multiple devices without per user licensing. Now, the advantage here is that the application is launched via the browser and as such has direct point of transaction access to the backend IBMI server. As you scan, uh, this Show Me Barcode in browser application is validating the results and submitting them to the IBMI via the Show Me engine that resides on the server. This seamless process provides live transactions with enterprise security and analytics. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into the technology within this introductory webinar, but suffice to say, Everything we've been discussing within this webinar is possible today. Real-time pointer transaction technology that's easy to adopt, roll out, and deploy for the IBMI Enterprise. Now, let me just take a couple of minutes to show you how to produce this through Show Me Barcode. Now, for those in the webinar who believe that Show Me brand uh, sounds familiar, you'd be absolutely right. Show Me Barcode is built as part of the extremely popular Show Me platform, which already includes real-time, multi-dimensional OLAP-based business intelligence, B2B portal, and application development. And it's this solution that provides the foundation for our real-time barcoding solution. Through web-based deployment using one enterprise license, the compatibility with office-based users to mobile operatives working on iPads, Android devices, and the like, including mobile computers for barcoding. But how do we go about creating these applications? Well, I'll quickly go through how we do it. And it all starts within this WYSIWYG Show Me Design Studio. It's here that we design our application. Now, Utilities 400 can design applications for you, or you can choose to design your own. And it's easy. We'll take a look. So within the design studio, we'll choose to uh, we'll choose the device that we're going to deploy to. Now the design studio has many different device types and settings to choose from, so we can format applications for dedicated devices. So in this case, we're creating the application for the Motorola device. When logging on, ShowMe will automatically detect the machine you're logging in from and set 
be resolution accordingly. Now we're presented with a work area representing the Motorola. We can see here it's in portrait and it looks very much uh, in the same format and resolution as you would on the device itself. So it really is a what you see is what you get uh, area. So let's add some elements and start building this mobile application. Now there are a number of options we can add here, including data grids and panels, which are the data handlers to and from the IVMI. But to start, I'm simply going to add an image. So selecting the image opens my library. I can choose one of the existing images or upload a new one. I'll select uh, the logo at the top there. This inserts a graphic, and just like within any graphic editing suite, I can move and resize this to my heart's content. So I've made this a little bit uh, smaller and put it just at the top there. Next, we're going to add a button. On selecting the button, we can do a number of things, including add animation and text. Now, I'll do this in a minute, but first I'm going to show you the choices uh, for what you can do when you press the button. So here I've selected events, and you can see here are all the options. There are many from interactions with the IBMI, exports, filters, and more. But as this is the launch menu, I want it to launch the stock updates program, so I'll select that dashboard. While I'm there, I'll change the button to read stock updates and change the size of the font too. Okay, so that's all done. Okay, once that is done, we just rinse and repeat with the other buttons and I'll add a smaller logo, log off uh, logo to the bottom when the operative has completed his shift. Great. So that's the main login menu completed. Now to produce the scanning screen for the stock updates themselves. So here I've created a copy of the main menu, remove buttons and added the subtitle of stock updates. Now, as I'm going to create a data entry field, I now add a data grid and choose the inquiry I want to add. Now a show me inquiry is a highly configurable method of presenting retrieving and writing data without the need for coding skills. It's really cool actually and you can uh, display data as graphs, charts and even export Excel if you like. But for this purpose we want to add a data entry table so we can scan data. Uh, the results are shown in real time. Okay so there it is. But it doesn't look very presentable so we'll freshen things up by changing the layout. So within ShowMe, we have complete control over data we receive and transact with over the IBMI. The look and feel is one of those areas. So here I'm going to change the font type, size, and background color. So what I end up with is something that's clean and fresh and easy to read by the operator. Finally, I'll add a couple of buttons to the interface, one to submit, and one to go back to the home page. Now at any point, uh, we can preview results in the Show Me emulator to see how the template would act on the device. So, okay, that all looks good in the emulator. Let's see what it would look like on the device itself. Okay, so perhaps this isn't the greatest of photo, grant me that. But as you see, the barcoding solution is up and running on the Motorola barcode scanning device in what took us less than an hour to develop. We could do the video in this webinar, but for a five minute video of this in action, keep an eye out for a follow up email, which will be dashing its way over to you uh, in the next day or two. For now, however, I'll take you through a quick scenario on how we could use such a development. Now in this example, we're within the no mean fee goods in department. First, the operator logs in. Now, this could be via a barcode scan of his identity badge or a traditional login session. The choice is open. We can direct to the appropriate application on login, so designated pickers would automatically be directed to their picking application. Quality operative to a QA application and so on. But for this 
uh, we've added a selection uh, so very many functions when he logs in he gets a menu with nice big pressable buttons clearly marked for ease of navigation for this process uh, the operative is selecting stock bookings as he wants to complete the goods received process so what will he do well first he'll scan the pallet now on the pallet there are two barcodes a pallet number barcode and a unique number from the originator that correlates with the order and a total quality barcode the expected number of items on that pallet then he'll scan the items on the pallet now you can set up the software so it moves to the next line automatically we can add validation at point of process two. Now in this particular example, as we're scanning, the application is providing a sum of the item scans, be this uh, a number of unique items or a scan of multiple items of the same type. So you can see on the application screen here, we've added, added an expected quantity of eight and a quick sum of the item scans also adds up to eight. So we'll hit submit. And on submit, the application completes a validation in real time and on success. Now, this could be automatically completed on scan or manually submitted on a button press. In this case, when the operative presses the submit button, the item quantity is checked against the validation as contained on the pallet. And as the two numbers matched, the application updates the database in real time. Now, if I was in a live demonstration at a customer site, I'd perhaps take you to the warehouse and show you the transactions we just completed with the barcode applications appear live on the dashboard on the plasma screen. This is a favorite for uh, one of our customers, Simon Jersey, who have found by having a leaderboard of top pickers, they've dramatically improved their warehouse productivity. No one likes to be the last on the pick and <laughs> Basically, the person who was last is always scanning that little bit quicker. So within this webinar, this brief introduction webinar, we've discovered uh, what is needed, how to develop, and provide an example of what to deploy for a total barcoding solution within the IBMI enterprise. The good news is that creating barcodes and implementing a barcode solution is far from rocket science. There are native solutions that will integrate seamlessly with your enterprise and have been designed specifically for ease of use and flexibility over multiple scenarios. Perhaps equally as important is that there are solutions that are tried and tested even with the most arduous business requirements. Now we hope you found this information within the webinar and the companion white paper to be useful but we're here to help please do feel free to contact us if you have any questions on any of the aspects of this webinar you can contact me uh, at a nicholson at uti400.com my name is andy nicholson before we close out the session today i do have a couple of questions i've noticed so I'll just answer those before I close it out. Uh, something here from Jonathan Delaney. He said, you mentioned a submit button after scanning. Can you automatically complete a transaction on each scan? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, we can. Uh, we don't have to do the submit. It can automatically submit. Uh, it depends upon the transaction and, and what interaction you want with the operator. Trevor Hall asks, I have a warehouse with uh, multiple racking with mezzanine floor, but only a relatively small storage stereo area. What will I need to get Wi-Fi up and running? Well, that would require on your individual requirements. Uh, a review can be completed by our team uh, or your local barcoding supplier. Uh, please do get in touch if you'd like us to look at that. But the general rules and some of those rules are answered within the white paper. So please do have a look through that and contact us if that doesn't answer your question. Tom Border asks, uh, we need to produce barcodes for UPS. Do you know the barcode type we need to use? Now, I believe it's a Maxico, which is a 2D barcode type, uh, similar to the, um, uh, the Unicode uh, barcode I showed earlier, the QR codes. 
uh, slightly different and unique, but I believe that those who want that uh, UPS uh, require you to be uh, produced, but not a problem for us, we can do that. So pretty much out of time, and we've done with the questions. Now, I will be available to answer your questions uh, via email. Uh, so any other questions, and it always happens, we know, <laughs> after a webinar, you say, oh, I wish I asked this. So please, I, I welcome you to send me an email. Uh, you can, again, it's a nicholson at uti400.com, or do send me a tweet at utilities400. We're on there too, we're being all sociable. But that's it for today. Keep an eye out for new webinars coming up. The next one is for a web shop, e-commerce, B2B e-commerce and B2C e-commerce, which is coming up next month. That's going to be a particularly exciting and interactive one. Uh, so please keep an eye out for that. It'll be coming, uh, the invitation for those will be coming in through our newsletter. If you haven't subscribed to your newsletter, please do by either, again, emailing me at a Nicholson at uti400.com or log on to our website and there's a link there to register for a newsletter. Always join us on our LinkedIn page as well and Facebook for more information and postings. But for now, thank you very much for your time. I wish you a very good afternoon. Bye-bye.